This is Anna. Thank you. Um, so let's let's go for it. What we're going to do today is a design session on the iPad. So I have my iPad here. We have this uh, this design that we're going to work on. Um, I'm going to have to do a bit of rearranging here, I think, to make room for this. And here we go. You can all see what I'm doing. So I'm going to turn this design, this sketch, into a finished design using just Procreate on the iPad. Um, this isn't something I usually do. Usually I would sketch a design, bring it over into Photoshop, and then I would use Photoshop to kind of finish the design off and, and add color and stuff like that. Um, but today, what we're going to do is do all in Procreate. And Procreate's got a lot better. And um, there's a lot of features now where you can essentially, if you are on the Illustrator side of things, by which I mean you are an illustrator, you're doing original drawings, and you can do things like hand lettering and stuff, then there's a lot of um, a lot of ways in which you can essentially just ditch Photoshop and just do all your designs in Procreate. There's not really many reasons not to... Uh, not to do that. So that's kind of the point behind this session. How do you create a t-shirt design, specifically a t-shirt design in Procreate? What what are some of the considerations and things um, go into that? So to accompany this video, I do have a blog post I posted today, uh, michaelessig.com forward slash iPad. You can see up there if you go to michaelessig.com forward slash iPad, or there's a link below in the description on YouTube uh, that will take you to that blog post. And there there's some pointers. I've written up a little bit about some of the main things and included links to some of the brushes and the particular tools that I'm going to use to help me put this together here today. So um, just off this particular design, this is an idea that came out of the Ideas Workshop, which is my course about coming up with original funny ideas and puns and concepts for designs particularly designs that are going to be funny and are going to, you know, get shared on social media and things that people are going to want to buy. Um, so this is one idea that came out of that. The, the, the phrase is lazy about you or I'm just lazy about you instead of crazy about you. So it's a, what I would call a rhyme and replace pun. Instead of crazy about you, we've got lazy about you because we've got a design around sloths. So that's the concept. Um, what we're going to do is take this sketch. This is actually part of a um, series of sketches I did, or this was this was kind of how it started. Let me make this a bit bigger. Um, so you can see here, this is how I kind of took the concept and started working through some variations and ideas and trying to brainstorm what would be the best way to lay out the design. And this is the one that I kind of settled on or think is the uh, perhaps the strongest for this particular um, subject. So that's what we're going to do. Um, we're going to do everything in Procreate, and you'll be able to follow along and watch me. And one last time, if you need to, if you want to find out more about the tools I'm using, some of the brushes I'm using, then you can see them at michaelessig.com forward slash iPad. Domitori says no chickens today. Absolutely not. We, uh, <laughs> if anyone says that looks like a rooster instead of a sloth, I will be very annoyed. Um, so yeah, here's our sketch. And this is my process, really. I'm going to walk you through my process of how I do this. So hopefully within the next 30, 40 minutes, maybe, obviously I'll take questions as well from the live stream, live comments as we go. So if you've got a question about what's going on um, or anything else, I'll, I'll check intermittently on the comments. But I will be uh, illustrating. I will be turning this into a finished design. So here's my actual, this is my sketch. To save a bit of time, I've done a few things. So I've sketched out this as my kind of um, main starting sketch. So not too much detail, but just a bit more detail than the, the original sketch. I should point out Procreate on the iPad. When you're about to do a design like this, as you know, if you're doing anything more than just sketching and brainstorming, um, this is going to be our final canvas for the artwork. So we're going to export from here to a PNG. We're going to export a transparent PNG. That's going to be what we upload. Um, so that's kind of the um, the the process we're going to go through here. Rather than you know drawing something, bringing it into Photoshop, we're going to do everything in Procreate. And to do that, one thing you need to bear in mind is the size of your canvas because default. Um, 
a lot of people, when using Procreate, they'll start a new canvas and they'll use um, the standard screen size, which is quite a lot smaller than what you might want to use for for um, a final T-shirt design. So here, my canvas here, I've got a, a canvas template set for what I call merch, which is basically the dimensions of a merch by Amazon canvas, four five hundred by five four hundred at three hundred DPI, and I would recommend that that is the canvas you use, so that your the the line work, all the everything you put down on canvas here is going to look good when it's blown up or, or when it's actually you know uploaded on for for the t-shirt and stuff. Um, a couple of comments here. Fiona says screen is very blurred to me, and Anna says blurry for me too. Okay, let me see if I can just. Quickly switch my uh, Wi-Fi. It might be my Wi-Fi that's causing issues. So let me see if I can just switch on that. Mic. Okay, uh, screen is good. A few people saying screen is good. A few people saying screen is bad. So I guess we'll plow on because um, uh, there's quite a few people saying it's okay. Okay, let's crack on then. So um, here's my sketch. Uh, yeah, canvas, as I was just saying, this is a Merch by Amazon final artwork canvas, which I find to be fine for uploading to, to anything. Um, so whether it's you know, Redbubble, Etsy, whatever you're doing, wherever you're selling stuff, I find that if the if the artwork is four five hundred by five four hundred, um, it's going to be fine. So, um, this is my canvas. This is where this is roughly the position I think the design should be in on the canvas. So it's going to be kind of in the chest area on the shirt. And uh, let's start going at it. So this is my sketch. First thing I'm going to do is um, my line work for the sloth itself. So I found some nice, um, I don't know whether these are actually new um, new brushes that they've added in uh, Procreate, but one of them here called, what's this one called? Mercury, which I've decided is very nice, looks really good um, for doing line work. So this is a really simple design. The kind of vibe I'm going for is going to be really um, a little bit vintage, a little bit retro, just kind of, kind of relaxed um, design. Almost like, um, you know, we're going for people who are into sloths. I'm assuming so. We're going for a kind of laid back vibe, both in the obviously the concept, but also in the design and how that's going to be communicated. So what what I have in mind is kind of a slightly vintagey look and the bit of a one effect. Kind of like it's going to be on a grey sport, grey t-shirt. I think. And it's going to be the kind of design someone might just wear, you know, around the house or something. So it's going to be kind of cute and funny. Um, that's the kind of vibe we're going for. Obviously, it's a funny kind of concept. So um, I've got this particular brush. Um, what's it called? I said Mercury, I think. Um, just a nice, slight hand-drawn feel to it. It's not, you know, ultra polished and stuff. But I'm going to use this to do a sloth line work. So... I'm just going to do all the main line work for this little sloth guy here. And obviously, there's a lot we could talk about when it comes to illustration and, um, you know, how you draw a character and all that kind of stuff. It's probably a bit too detailed for today's session, and I think we'd be better off um, focusing here on you know, some of the techniques to use Procreate and um, create a nice finished design, but I'm going to put his toes on as well. Creepy sloth toes. Um, I think we'll do, do some nice big sleeping eyes, cute little smiley face. And what else do we need to do? I think that will do for our mind work. So we've got the sloth 
obviously he's kind of relaxing on this um, this branch here. I think we're going to do this on a kind of sports gray, light gray T-shirt. I think what I'm going to do is um, – what would be a good color to go for? Maybe if we just go for black and white for now, and then we could always add some more color later. But what I'm thinking is we can do a, um, oh no, I've done my line work on the same layer. Oh no. Okay. Um, rookie error. Let's do, let's do the line work on a clean layer to start with. See, I'm not thinking clearly. So here we go again. Just going to trace over my original line work. And uh, you guys can talk amongst yourselves. Molly says, will this be recorded later? Yes, as usual. Um, unless I become terribly ashamed of the final output, um, the session will be available immediately after, immediately once we've finished. And you can watch. You can you can even play this thing back anytime you like. So here's my little sloth. Just uh, roughly finish up these. Oh no, that's no good. These pp pp toes. And give him some nice big sleepy eyes. Don't know whether it's a him or a her. Smiley face. And. Uh, do what I was doing, move back over to my, oops, move back over to my branch. Whoops, we need to get rid of that. Okay. okay, here we go. So the idea with the branch I'm thinking is instead of, you know, drawing this whole thing out, if we draw our branch in white and give a nice kind of contrast, uh, instead of like outlining everything and then, uh, you know, instead we can use some different colors or just black and white, and then everything will fit together nicely. And it will look a little bit more like a t shirt design, like, like we've taken some time to think about, you know, what's going to be the best color for this or what's going to make it look, you know, kind of retro and cool and a bit of vintage effect and that kind of thing. So this is kind of what I have in mind for our branch. Uh, is going to be resting on. Um, and what else do we need to do? So we've got, let's get rid of this uh, background. So this is what we've got so far, nothing too uh, complicated. But what we want to do, I think, is make sure this sloth has a clear face, kind of the standard sloth, um, whatever you'd call it. Not mask, but, you know, they have this little kind of, they have a face, right? Put that in there. And then we can just cut out, because they have these, like, little eye bits. Over here and here. And that, even that, starting to a little bit more like a. Oh, I know what we should do. Uh, we should do his creepy fingers and toes in white as well. Just to sh add a bit more color and stuff. Okay, so we've got an illustration that's coming together a little bit more. Um, so a couple of things we can do in um, Procreate to make this look a little better, um, to add a little bit more detail. Now, usually what I would do is um, probably start doing some kind of simple lines like this to, to add a bit of depth and, and stuff, um, which is fine, of course. But there are other options we have now in Procreate because this so many great brushes out there. One of them I found recently, um, which again links to this will be in the um, in at michaelessig.com/ipad. 
But I found a particular brush pack uh, like the tone, and you can get brushes like this. So you can see it's kind of like almost like fur, which is great, which means we can kind of draw, you know, draw fur on our on our animals and stuff. So what I'm going to do here is actually create a new layer. I've got a new layer here, and I'm going to kind of map out where I'd want to draw, you know, like some shading where I'd usually do that by hand. But all I'm doing here is, as you can see, it's kind of like a almost like a mask kind of effect, and it's it's just going to add the these dots in wherever I color in. So if I want a bit of shading down here. Sorry, guys, not sure what happened there or at what point exactly you lost. I was in the middle of uh, shading my little slot guy. So here you can see, I think, in fact, we can make this a bit bigger. Um, add in a bit of shading down the side here, maybe on the back of his head a little bit, just on the edge. Uh, maybe under here. And this will just add a little bit of, you know, a bit of depth and a bit of, a bit of something to our to our sloth. So where uh, we'd have a bit of, you know, aiding, I don't need to tell you how to illustrate things, but this is kind of how I would do it. And then similarly, we could do the same to add a little bit of highlighting. So instead of black, we just switch to white. And we can do, you know, maybe we'll do a bit of white here, on this side, up here. And so on, just add a little bit of a little bit of depth to our sloth. And the thing about these brushes, of course, is that I'm not having to make these individual lines. I'm just kind of coloring in anywhere where I think you know we'd want to add this this kind of effect, and we're getting this nice you know speckled effect. Uh, Kathleen says the fur brush, um, the brush pack is called Lithotone. There's a link to it in the in the blog post, michaelessig.com forward slash iPad. Um, it's by a company called True Grit, and there's a whole range of different brushes, as you can see here. A particular brush is called the Brush Dabs. Um, brush Dabs. And also, of course, with these brushes, you can play around with the size and stuff. So this one's, you know, it's not huge, um, but I, I've, like, duplicated it. I've created another version, which is a bit bigger, as you can see there. So if I wanted to... You know, create a bit of a bigger, bigger fur lines. Then I can do that, and it just makes it a lot easier than having to, you know, go in and dabble everything. Um, another thing I do, I'm going to go in and use the eraser tool, and I'm going to just add a bit of shading also to our to our tree branch here. So here's our branch. Rather than do this in like black and you know darken everything up. I'll just do this with the eraser tool. And literally what I'm doing is erasing out the uh, the white brown, erasing parts of it out to make it look um, like it's got some shading on it. And obviously that's going to have a nice, should add a bit more detail and effect. And you just want to, you know, anytime with a t-shirt design where you've got lots of, um, where you've got lots of, solid a block of solid color you kind of want to try and break it up a little bit just to you know make it look a little bit more um yeah I'll detail, just so we've not got any solid you know solid blocks of color and then i can kind of do a little bit of a fade out thing here so this is not quite you know not a not a solid quick end to the to the branch something like Obviously, if I had a bit more time, we'd take a bit more time over this. Um, but there we go. I think I'd also like to add a um, couple of where are we? A couple of like little and a couple of leaves maybe on the tree. Just add a little bit of detail. Just to flesh it out a little bit. So there's our pretty much our illustration there um a couple of comments heather when you say you usually sketch before importing to ps do you sketch on procreate or on old-fashioned paper um 
on Procreate um, these days. Yeah, definitely. I, uh, it's been a while since I've sketched on paper and scanned anything in or anything like that. Uh, not to say you can't do that, of course, whatever works for you, but um, Procreate has been my go-to for sketching, but I haven't um, so far really created and finished a design in Procreate. I've always brought the sketch over to um, to Photoshop to finish it up. So, of course, the big thing now, we've got to get our text in. So, um, this is where another of the great um, additions comes in. Procreate isn't great at text and fonts and stuff. I know they've added the ability to add text and fonts, but it's still pretty um, pretty basic. It's not the, the full features that you'd expect or that you get in Photoshop or something like that. So what I'm going to do is make use of a very cool tool, um, or I should say brush brushes set. Uh, these are by the hand letterers Ian Barnard and Stefan Kuntz. If you're aware of those guys, very good hand letterers with lots of resources. And they put together this, this pack of brushes, which um, if I just show you what it is here, um, we do a new layer. So here you can see this is a this is a brush which just gives you a template that you can then fill in for your lettering. So this is all the, you know, the kind of standard letter shapes and they've got in different versions. And then the idea is you can then go over this with your, you know, with your ink, whatever, and you can see where the A would be or how you would need to draw a B because it would kind of be in that shape and stuff. So it keeps your, your hand lettering in place. And this is what my preference would be for Procreate. Um, if you, you know, if you really want to use fonts and stuff, I find it easier to bring stuff over into Photoshop. But this makes it very easy to do um, to do lettering, hand lettering directly in Procreate, and then we don't ever have to really leave Procreate. We can finish. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh start building out the uh the letters we need so we're going for lazy about you so we want our word lazy in fact if i bring my sketch back in here just so i can kind of make out um, rough positioning um so what i need to do is just have a a letter grid for each of my letters here and then i'm going to go in and just kind of hand letter them so i think the kind of vibe i'm going for here i want it to look a little bit kind of hand drawn and a little bit rough around the edges anyway. Um, so, oops, I should say what I'm doing here is just kind of selecting each one of these and putting it where I want it to go, the right kind of size and stuff. These grids slightly off, you can see I'm kind of messing around with the with the rotation a little bit so i don't want them like necessarily in line just a little bit different each one and then we've got something that's a bit more you know it's going to have that kind of freehand vibe even though it's not you know we don't want it to look too uniform and stayed we want it to look a little bit loose Loosey goosey. Okay. So there we've got a grid now that we can fill in. Um, and don't know how well you can see that on your screens, but now all I have to do is go ahead and I can start um, drawing, inking my letters. So um, I should probably sketch them first, but the vibe I wanted to go for was kind of like a um, 70s kind of vintage vibe. So your L would be something like this uh, with kind of a big, you know, this kind of, kind of vibe. I'm gonna draw these, yeah, something like that. So I'm not gonna have time to really take too much time over this for the sake of our session, but this is the kind of thing I'm going for, um, and the grid is, you know, even if you don't stick to it kind of 
religiously or anything. It's there to help you figure out, you know, roughly where you might want things to be. Um, so here, something like that. Yeah, that's kind of pretty close to what I have in mind. Um, and then, of course, you know, I don't have to stick to it exactly. I can move this around a little bit. Um, things like that. We can maybe move it high. Obviously, we're going to position this a little bit. Yeah, something like that. That will do the job nicely, I think. So now I can get rid of those that template. Um, let's get rid of that as well and bring back. So I've uh, prepared earlier. I've done the, the bot grid um, to save you watching me do that. And let's do a new layer for our bottom text. So again, I'm just going to come down here and kind of hand draw this. Sec, let's make this. There we go. Obviously, the more time you have to spend on this, the nicer your letter will end up looking. but I'm in a little bit of a rush to try and get everything done here. Sue says, I'm curious about adding ZZZ to play on the sleeping Z. Yeah, um, you could certainly do that. Um, I think for sake of time, I'm gonna keep it, this design relatively straightforward and simple. Um, but of course, yeah, if you've got ways you can uh, do more with it than, than yeah, have at it. Definitely, you could. There's room here for ZZZ or something like that. Um, so, yeah. Okay, the U, lazy about U. And again, I'm just trying to get this done fairly sharp here, fairly quick. So we can complete our design here. Okay. So there we got our bottom text as well. Let's get rid of the template. I think we need to give a bit more space here. Something like that. So you can see we've got a nice kind of hand-drawn vibe. It's not you know, super polished or anything, but it's looking kind of close to what I had in mind, I think I would say. Um, so obviously what we need to do here if we move our, where's our lazy? Is it behind you? So what should we do? Hmm. I'm just thinking about the best way to handle this text. I think, yeah, what we'll do is we'll fill in our text with white. Like this. And oops, and bottom layer down there too. I think it would, would be nicer if we had a particular color we could throw in here as well, but for sake of time, let's keep it black and white. The good thing about black and white designs like this is you can then use them on any kind of, you know, any kind of color or background shirt, um, or you can use them on certain kinds of background shirts, I should say. Um, now, I think here's what we're going to do. Let's uh, let's make this mask. And then what we can do is come in here and we can blow out this anywhere where there's going to be a kind of conflict here with our illustration. So get rid of those so that our sloth is front and center. So I'm just literally 
using the mask and then using a black brush, and it's going to blow that out over the uh, over the sloth. And then we could also to to make it stand out even more. What we could do is I'll tell you what we could try. Let's try some. Uh, Oops. I'm just thinking we could try. I'm not sure that's going to work, actually. Um, what might be better is just a kind of standard. Let's go back to our ink. And we can just do a little outline. And that's going to kind of give the effect of a border. We can, like, draw our own kind of hand-drawn border just to create that bit of space between hmm, not sure actually <laughs> on second thoughts on second thoughts no on second thoughts i think it kind of works as it is uh susan what's your main brush it seems sharp with no anti-aliasing and doesn't streamline your strokes this one is mercury um which i think is a one of the new Procreate ones they've added recently. Um, so yeah, I think what we could do with here actually, tell you what we should do. Let's, uh, select lazy, do a new layer, and then on that layer, let's do a let's use the eraser and let's try something like this maybe what's that going to look like oh, no, I can't use the eraser um, Or if we go down here on the, yeah, on the mask. No, because I want to do, uh, what do I want to do? Um, I was thinking about adding some shading, but I've changed my mind. Okay, so we've got, uh, I'll tell you what would, what would do nicely is if we take it to the final kind of stages here. So let's say this is our final-ish design. But we've got some quite strong, big blocks of uh, ink, you could say here, like the text in particular. So we want to kind of break this up and give it a kind of method and one warm effect. The one way to do that is um, is if we go on this layer mask and then we choose some of these um, these kind of distressed brushes. So. Um, in the brush pack called Distress Press, which is one of those that's included in the in what I've linked in that blog post uh, from True Grit, um, there's plenty of these kind of distressed tones, which are going to kind of give a bit of a worn and weird look to things. So if I choose one of these guys, maybe choose this one, um, and if I just add that, you can see, or maybe you can't see because it's quite subtle, but it's going to just kind of give this little worn effect. So I can add this on the, just around here, a bit around here. And then if I choose another one that's maybe a bit more intense, then we can start adding kind of a bit of shading to the text. And giving a bit more, oops, of a kind of um, almost a gradient kind of shift effect as we're coming up from the from the lazy there. So this is going to serve to kind of separate, you know, put a bit more distance between the uh, sloth illustration and the text. And we can do something similar on the, whoops, what we could do if we were on the right layer. We can do something similar here. Mask. 
Oh, max. What do this? Maximum is. Mask. So yeah, we can do the same thing down here. Oops. Just adding a little bit of worn and weathered effect to our text. And that serves to break up the, um, you know, the, the solidness of the, the artwork. And of course, to give a bit more of a vintage kind of vibe to the design overall. Maybe go and select one of those slightly lesser ones as well. And we can use the same thing as well on the on our sloth itself. So on our sloth, what we can do is in fact I think we could do with we could go a bit heavier there, can we? Maybe we need something even heavier still. Not that heavy. Um, just to make it obvious that that's the kind of vibe we're going for. Something like that. And then we can um, maybe take one of these more subtle ones. And if we select our sloth or, for example, the... Uh, how well you can see that because it is quite subtle but a sloth or our tree branch we can start blowing off a little bit of those and just add a little bit as you can see a little bit of worn and weatheredness to the design itself we could even um, if we wanted to add a new layer I'm gonna have to remove some layers before I can do that um we can add a few of these just as see yeah, how that kind of works there maybe not that one something a bit more subtle you know just some little kind of speckles and stuff here and there just a little bit of white just to make it you know, look a little bit more vintagey, vintage vibe. Maybe you could do, do a few black ones as well if you wanted. Again, I'm around with not much rhyme or reason to anything, but <laughs> you get the idea. Um, yeah, and we start to get this kind of vintage, vintage vibe going on. Um, you could do the same as well. One thing we haven't done is is applied the same to the um, to the line work on the sloth. So here around is you know just these bits of line work. We just kind of give them a little bit of worn and weathered look. And again, see if we um, because we've used masks, you can see if we if we drop the background here, we do have a completely transparent design. So this could work on. Um, well, could work on pink, could work on, um, you know, a light blue design or something like that, or slightly darker blue, could work on a green, maybe a light green or a kind of Kelly green or something like that. So that's one good thing about just doing a black and white design like that. We've got uh, the versatility there when we finished with it to to put it on some different, different designs or different shirt colors. So... Um, from there, really as simple as we could go and export this, export it as a PNG, and that could be ready to upload. And I think, I'm not saying it's the best design in the world or anything, but I think it would pass uh, muster on Redbubble. You know, the good design like this as well, this is something that, um, you know, we can put it on Merch by Amazon, we can put it on Redbubble. It's, qual it's a quality original illustration. It looks nice. We've, you know, Procreate allows us to go in and add these little details to make it look, you know, vintagey and cool and and something that we'd be proud to post on our Instagram and stuff like that. So we've really got something that we can use in all these dis different distributions. You know, it doesn't have to be, um, you know, 
you know, it, it can work on threads. It could be licensed offline because it's a nice looking design and stuff like that. Uh, could work as a sticker, could work on various different products. So yeah, um, that's, uh, that's how I'd approach a design like this for a kind of modern, vintage cute approach that would probably, I think, appeal to our target audience of sloth loving individuals, whoever they are. Um, lazy about you. Okay, so um, I think the, the main, um, or two of the main things that make this a lot easier, the letter builder, the grid builder, again, this is another tool um, similar to the letter builder, but instead of individual letters, this allows you to, to kind of do a grid for your text and decide, you know, how you would fill that with your text. So again, that's a very cool tool. Uh, these are both linked in myclassic.com forward slash iPad if you want the links for these particular brush sets. Um, I think I've linked through to two bundles where you can get quite a discount on these. Um, but yeah, I think, you know, this is by no means my, you know, I'm, I'm not an expert on Procreate or anything, um, but it's so easy to, you know, use a couple of these brush sets and tools, get them loaded up onto your iPad and uh, create a design like this. As you can see in relatively, what, what did that take? About 30, 40 minutes. So not too long at all. Okay, it says, which iPad do you use? I have an old iPad Pro. Um, it's at least three years old, I think now, but it's still working fine. Um, so yeah, I don't think, I think the, the newer iPad Airs and stuff, or even the iPads, anything that can work with the Apple Pencil, um, I think I think you're good to go with those. I think they're all pretty um, pretty snappy. I don't think you'd necessarily need a, a pro version to um, uh, you know, to create something like this on the iPad. I think the the later ones are, are pretty good as well. Uh, but yeah, mine's an old iPad Pro, and this is just Procreate, which is I don't know how much it costs, but a very very reasonably priced piece of software um, for something like this. Okay. Um, I think I will post this design to my Redbubble and I'll sh share out the link to it. Um, any other questions, thoughts? Um, in fact, let me pull up so you can see two particular brush tools that I've used here today to help you with that. So if I just get rid of our sloth and share this instead. So, uh, so yeah, if you go to michaelessig.com forward slash iPad, it should take you to this page here. And um, if you scroll down, you'll see I've written about, you know, important things to know, things like canvas size you should bear in mind. Um, and included links to the tools. So the Letter and Grid Builder Bundle by... Ian Barnard and uh, Stefan Kuntz is linked there. And then the textures, it's the True Grip Procreate Texture Brush Pack, uh, which I've been using, which you can see here, and includes all these, um, all the brushes that I've used, uh, these textures, half tones, which are particularly good for T-shirt designs, um, really good for finding that vintage look. Um, and loads of other bits and pieces as well. I think it's this one, uh, the Lethatone pack, which is included in here, which has things like the fur, fur brush and things like that. So uh, those are linked there if you're interested and you want to.
Sorry, guys. Technical um, issues again have rendered me, uh, kicked me off my own stream. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. Um, uh, Armin said, hi, Michael from Leipzig. I think I was late today. Can you please summarize the tools you used? Uh, Procreate on the iPad, my brain for developing ideas. And uh, the Apple Pencil, of course, on the iPad, and then um, the tools that I just shared, which you can all see at michaelessic.com forward slash iPad. You can find all the links there. They're also in the in the description on YouTube. I'm not going to dare try and share my screen again or anything because everything seems to crash when I do that. I think it might might be time for me to face the music that I need to get an, a new laptop. But... Um, I'd rather not. Well, I, I can't. I can't even get a laptop right now because all the stores are closed. But uh, maybe when the stores are open, I'll have to go and get myself a new machine that can cope with opening more than two windows at a time. Um, so sorry about technical issues today, guys. Any questions before we wrap it up today? I will post this design on my Redbubble if you want to go and check it out there. Once it's live, I'll send the email. Uh, I'll email out a link to that later on tonight, maybe. Um, if you have any questions about Procreate on the iPad, anything I can help you with, or anything else before we wrap this up in the next few minutes, um, anything about Print on Demand, Redbubble, Merch by Amazon, using Etsy, using uh, Printful, all those kind of things, I'd be happy to ask, answer a few last-minute questions before we have to wrap it up here today. Um, so, yeah, I, I'm pretty happy with that design, even though it was kind of a rush. I think it came out kind of nice and groovy looking. Um, so yeah, maybe I'll even buy a poster or something and stick it in the background, stick it on my Instagram and uh, show it off. Um, let's see here. Any questions I missed from previous in the stream? Um, let's see here. Uh, Kevin says, designing up 400 DPI, helpful or pointless? Um, I don't, I, I've never had a problem at 300 DPI. I'm not sure what 400 DPI, what the what the extra 100 DPI does for you. Um, so yeah, uh, don't know. I don't think it really matters. I think, you know, when it comes to um, uh, DPI and quality for, for uploading your artwork, uh, 300 DPI seems to be the standard that is requested by most um, most platforms. However, I th I'm pretty sure DPI doesn't actually matter as long as your artwork is actually decent enough quality and, and to those exact pixel dimensions. Um, so yeah, um, pass on the 400 DPI question. 300 is fine, I think. Gaspard, is there a minimum brush size you would recommend in terms of quality of impression? Um, I think, yeah, I mean, one important thing to remember um, about Procreate is, of course, it is not a vector program. It is a um, it is uh, a raster, you know, artwork program like Photoshop. So you do need to be careful with your brushes sometimes if you're pushing them because you can increase the brush size. And if you do that, some of these brushes are based on, you know, raster image or all of the all of the brushes are based on raster images. And if you push them too hard, you're going to end up with pixelated brushes, which might not be, you know, if you're if you're doing an illustration kind of like we were at these kind of sizes, um, chances are it's not going to be a massive issue when it finally prints on a T-shirt. But it could be if you're not paying too much attention. So I can't give you a, a specific on a brush size. I would just say that it's just something you want to keep keep aware of. And what I do is just literally zoom into the artwork or, or even just kind of, what I like to do, and the iPad's good for this, uh, just kind of zoom in so that it's the kind of size it would be on a T-shirt. So kind of, you know, place that in your head and then just kind of, so for example here, you know, this is kind of pretty close to what, kind of got reflection there, but that's kind of about the size it's probably going to be on a shirt. Yeah, almost perfect. So, um, so that... What I would do is literally look at that and, and just kind of look at the, you know, I'm looking at the pixels, I'm looking at the the worn effect, and I'm thinking, 
when that's going to be printed, is it, you know, does it look okay? Are there any, you know, super pixelated issues I need to be worried about? But I can't see anything there. So I'd literally like, you know, use your eyes, see what you can spot. How far in can we go on this thing? If I, there we go. Oh, look at that. Nice. So you can see the worn and weathered, but to me, the worn and weathered stuff looks actually pretty pretty neat and tidy. Um, certainly nothing I'd be worried about. So there you go. Lazy about you sloth on the iPad. Looks okay when it's kind of about the size it's going to end up being printed. So yeah. Okay. Um, Bo, how difficult is it to offer POD t-shirts on Etsy? Um, it is not difficult at all. I I feel like I'm missing something in the question there, but um, how difficult is it to offer POD t-shirts on Etsy? Um, it's not difficult. Etsy integrates with all of the major print-on-demand fulfillment companies, Printful, Printify. So you can hook up directly and start um, you know, working with a, a supplier as your back-end supplier, as your print-on-demand fulfillment company, and you can simply uh, start selling your designs on there. It's, it's very easy. Um, I do have a blog post all about the best print-on-demand companies if you want to check that out, but unless I'm missing something, I, <laughs> um, it's very easy indeed. Armin, is there an app you recommend as a replacement for Photoshop? Uh, yeah, Affinity um, Designer and Affinity Photo um, are the best replacements right now for Photoshop. Um, they are very cheap, like $50 or less. Yeah, I think they're even less than that at the moment. Uh, Affinity Photo is the kind of Photoshop alternative. Affinity Designer is their kind of Illustrator alternative, a vector program. Um, and they're both you know, very good. They're certainly not as advanced with all the super you know, incredible features that Photoshop and Illustrator have. But if you're anything like me, you, know, you never touch any of the super advanced features for Photoshop or Illustrator. You use Photoshop to copy, paste, cut, you know, add some text, add some fonts and, you know, put text on a, on a, what's the word, on a path and then, you know, export a PNG. So um, they will all do that for you. I think uh, recently they added text on a path for Affinity Photo or Designer. I can't remember which one. Um, but yeah, check those out. Affinity Designer and Affinity Photo would be the best Photoshop replacements right now. Crystal, if you use CMYK instead of sRGB, you'll be using colors uh, used in printing. Yes, that's true. Um, however, color calibration and all those things, very complicated issue. Um, I prefer just to use RGB. Um, that's you know that's the the images and the colors that people are going to see on their screens when they're purchasing a product yes everything has to be converted to cmyk when it's going to be printed on a shirt but remember your users are not seeing in cmyk they're going to be seeing in rgb when they're buying and when they're looking on your instagram and stuff so i don't think it makes a huge difference either way you know very few people can naturally see the difference between rgb and cmyk um so yeah it, do it doesn't bother me but Obviously, if you prefer to design in CMYK, no big no big deal either way, really. Gaspard says, I see. Thanks. Okay, cool. I think, um, oh, one here from Bo. Lol, you aren't missing anything. I was asking in general, a complicated high maintenance, and your answer was spot on. Um, I mean, Etsy is in itself more high maintenance. It depends where you're coming from, Bo. If you're coming from Redbubble, then... Etsy is going to be more high maintenance because it involves you being the seller. It's a marketplace. You know, it's a place where you sell. It's like eBay or it's like um, selling at your local market or something like that. You're the seller of record. So people are going to ask you questions. People, you know, if people have an issue, they're going to want a refund. You have to deal with all that. Um, but in terms of how easy is it to get it set up, it's pretty basic. Printful and Printify will walk you through their process for for hooking up with Printify and with Printful and you know the communication and all that is pretty seamless these days. Um, so when a, a customer on Etsy receives or places an order, it's gonna go automatically to whoever you're hooked up with. So Printful or Printify, and they will do the printing and the shipping and everything will talk to one another fine. They'll, they'll ping you back the shipping details and stuff. So it can all happen automatically. The only thing that isn't automatic is customer issues, customer relations, refunds, 
um, anything like that, you know, questions about products, that's what you have to deal with on Etsy. But if you're prepared to do that, um, and um, I think it's it's fairly, you know, fairly straightforward. You get the same questions all the time. But, um, but yeah, it, Etsy has been very good for us over the past few years. It's really grown um, quite a lot. So I, I think it is a really good a really good option, um, especially because it also tends to attract a more, uh, or t it certainly tends to attract the artsy, higher end audiences who are willing to pay a bit more for a t-shirt than just, you know, people looking for a $10, $15 shirt. Those are available on Etsy, but you can also, you know, we, we, we charge $25, $26, $27 for a shirt on our Etsy store or my Etsy store. So, um, so yeah, you can sell at higher prices. You can you can demand higher prices and get more profit than you would if you were selling on Redbubble, Merch by Amazon, or or something like that. Armin, is designing with the iPad Pen easier for you than with the mouse on the PC? Yeah, I mean it depends on on what you're doing. Like obviously, if you're doing a a basic text design or some kind of parody or something, um, it can be quicker to do that and realize that on Photoshop it, because I've spent years in Photoshop and I can do stuff quickly there. What fo what I can't do in Photoshop is quickly illustrate something and I prefer to do that in Procreate. So it kind of depends uh, what exactly your, um, what you're trying to do, um, what design you're trying to put together. And you will know, you know, better than anyone, this would be so much quicker if I just opened Photoshop and did it. Um, but, or this would be so much easier if I had a pen that I could hold and draw and sketch and do the coloring this way rather than, you know, a mouse on a PC, which is very hard to do coloring and sketching and stuff like that. So, yeah. Um, okay. I think we will wrap it up there today. 59 minutes. We did have some technical issues. Sorry about that. Um, I think uh, I think I've said everything I wanted to say. If, you, if you've enjoyed this, if you want to like and subscribe, that would be awesome. Um, Go and check out michaelessick.com forward slash iPad for all the uh, links to the resources and stuff today. And do be sure to sign up to my email newsletter. You will get loads of free goodies there. You can go to michaelessick.com forward slash live for more on that as well. Um, but yeah, I think we'll finish it up there. Thanks for joining me. Hope you enjoyed uh, putting together our little design here. And um, yeah, hope that was fun. I'll see you in the next video, next session, or in your inboxes tomorrow or whenever. All right. Thanks for joining me, guys. Have a great rest of your weekend, um, or have a great rest of your Thursday, and then have a nice weekend, and I'll see you soon. Okay. Bye-bye.